Time now for that morning rush. We start with Kristen Curry. Good morning. Mostly sunny conditions across the state today. Hot temperatures and strong winds and a repeat day tomorrow with no rain or thunderstorms expected. Crystal? We begin with the developing news for you this morning. The Kilauea volcano on Hawaii's Big Island showing signs it could soon explode. Geologists are warning that an explosion could hurl boulders the size of cars. Scientists think it could happen within a few days. Officials now say residents should be safe as long as they stay out of the closed Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Volcanic lava has already destroyed at least 36 structures and blanketed nearly 117 acres. Fernanda. Meanwhile, a former New Mexican who was supposed to be enjoying retirement in paradise has been forced to flee his home because of lava from the Kilauea volcano. I went running back down my driveway and I said to my wife, we got to get out of here. Harry Messenheimer is the founder of the Rio Grande Foundation and left New Mexico for Hawaii 11 years ago to retire. He says in a panic, he and his wife had just minutes to grab what they could and leave their home. The Leilani Estates, where they lived, is now a lava field. He doesn't expect to ever live there again and will move into a condo this fall. David? Happening today, APD continues investigating a suspicious death in southeast Albuquerque. Officers responded to a neighborhood near central and western skies. This was around 1 yesterday afternoon. Police say a woman was found dead in the side yard of the apartment building with signs of trauma. Officers say at this time, no suspect of interest has been identified. We're also waiting to hear back from Albuquerque police about a deadly shooting investigation. Police say someone was shot last night in the South Valley on Wheeler near William. This is near Broadway in San Jose. APD not releasing the victim's name just yet. They're also not saying if investigators have identified a shooter. And this morning, Albuquerque police are looking for a man accused of murder. Police say 73-year-old Richard Robinson killed his neighbor, 58-year-old Chris Mitchens. It happened at an apartment complex near Catherine and San Pedro on Tuesday night. Witnesses say the two men were arguing when Robinson pulled a gun and shot Mitchens. Police say Robinson took off. They believe he's armed and driving a green Mazda pickup truck. On to new details for you this morning. Authorities are now warning residents in Beaumont, Texas to not touch any packages. That seems suspicious. And this as police investigate a second explosive device in a month. A device detonated outside the office doors of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church sometime between Wednesday evening and Thursday morning. The diocese says no one was injured in this blast, but it did cause minor damage. The church is near a Starbucks where another explosive device was recently discovered and disabled about a month last month. And new at 6, we're learning skeletal remains of a human foot have been found near the site where an SUV intentionally drove, was driven off a Northern California cliff. The bodies of Sarah and Jennifer Hart and four of their adopted children were found as part of the wreckage. Now authorities are seeing if the foot found in a shoe entangled in a pair of girls size 10 regular pants belonged to Hannah Hart. She, along with her brother, remain missing. On to news, new at 6, Los Alamos National Lab will split production of plutonium cores with South Carolina. The National Nuclear Security Administration's recommendation comes as the U.S. looks to ramp up production of the plutonium cores to 80 per year. Those cores triggered nuclear warheads. 30 of those cores will be produced at Lanol and the rest in South Carolina. According to the Santa Fe New Mexican, the federal government had planned to do that, but Lanol has recently been plagued with safety issues. Happening today, the final students will graduate at the Santa Fe University of Art and Design. The school says it's closing because of dropping enrollment and financial challenges. According to the school's website, the graduation will begin at 4 p.m. As for the future of the campus, the Santa Fe New Mexican reports there are no plans for another school to take over the site, but the city plans on finding new uses for the property. Kristen? Today's Metro Threat Index up to a 7. We've got hot temperatures in the 90s, strong winds 20 to 30 miles per hour, and critical fire danger with red flag warnings kicking in at 10 a.m. here in the Rio Grande Valley. Happening now, police say they will be increasing enforcement on Lead Avenue in response to yet another crash near Edith and Lead yesterday. The homeowner whose fence keeps getting wrecked says he's fed up and wants help from the city. The city says it lowered the speed limit to 30 miles an hour to, with, to help with the issue ultimately leaving it up to drivers to be more responsible. The city also recently approved the installation of traffic lights on both lead and coal at Walter, but isn't sure when they'll go up. On to news happening today. The new McKinnon Center for Business Management building at UNM officially opens. A ribbon cutting today marks the end of an 18-month construction project, giving students new classrooms, a tech center, career planning, and placement center, as well as a behavior research lab. The new building cost $25.4 million, but only 3% came from state funds. Competition officially begins today at the Robo Rave Robotics Competition. 
And today, First Lady Elizabeth Keller will welcome the young scientists from around the world and honor 14-year-old Mohammed Bashir Bello, who drowned Monday at a hotel ahead of the competition. Students are making a memorial reward for one of the challenges that Bashir Bello was going to participate in. Kristen. Time now for a look at traffic. We have our news tracker out and about this morning on Tramway headed south towards I-40. Doesn't look to be any major issues in that area. As we take it to the map, the only crash we have right now on the uh, map right now is actually not even a crash. It's rolls of carpet in the right lane. That's I-25 northbound at Avenida Cesar Chavez. Please use caution in that area. The sky's the limit for mom this year. The National Retail Federation is predicting people will spend a near record $23.1 billion on Mother's Day. On average, Americans are expected to shell out 180 bucks per person on gifts ranging from flowers to even electronics. Woo. Good news for mom. We love our mamas. All right, time now for the five facts. We start with number five here. YMCA's Camp Shaver will have a new look this summer, all thanks to some local volunteers. Each year, Keller Williams donates a day of volunteering. This year, the real estate company's local branch dedicated their time to cleaning up Camp Shaver in the Hamas Mountains. 75 volunteers spent the day painting and upgrading trails to get ready for the in incoming campers. Week-long camp sessions do begin June 3rd. They run through August 4th. And number four, the New Mexico Game and Fish Department is letting anglers know about new rules using a unique strategy. Officers have been busy posting special trout water signs across the state. A red chili sign means there's catch and release with tackle restrictions, while a green chili sign means there's a two trout daily bag limit with tackle restrictions. And lastly, the Christmas chili sign also sets a two trout limit with any legal tackle. At number three, hot, dry, and windy today. Tomorrow, warm and windy, and we'll go breezy and warm on Mother's Day with temperatures in the 80s this weekend. And number two, now Wisconsin investigators looking for help in New Mexico to solve a big case. We're talking about a 34 year old cold case murder. The woman who's never been identified is thought to look like this person in your sketch on your TV screens. Her body was found brutally beaten in 1984 on a rural Wisconsin road. Investigators recently sent her clothing into forensic investigators who found pollen from either New Mexico or Arizona on it. We have more information for you on the case history at alwaysonkrqe.com. And at number one this morning, we have Rio Rancho Police are conducting an internal review after a number of people came forward about an officer's behavior during a recent incident. Witness video shows an older man on top of a 17-year-old with a motorcycle at the intersection near High Resort and 528. Witnesses say police quickly made up their mind that the older man was the victim regardless of what everyone was telling them. The 17-year-old's mother says she believes officers profiled her son. No one was seriously injured in the fight. Rio Rancho police say they're also reviewing the incident to see if any criminal charges will be filed.